Okay, so we're on day one of unit nine. We're going to be talking about transformations. Uh, the SOL that we're looking at is G.3, and G.3 is the one that covers um, slope and the distance formula and the midpoint formula. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to write these formulas up here at the top of the paper so that you guys have something to go off of. So slope is y minus y over x minus x. Distance is the square root of <coughs> y minus y squared plus x minus x squared. And the midpoint formula is where we got um, x plus x divided by 2 but we also have y plus y divided by 2. And I've showed you various ways to find that uh, given the midpoint and the endpoints. So <clears throat> once you guys take a couple minutes to answer these questions, number four is also a review. Um, once you answer them, I'll go over the answers and show you some different ways that we've done them in the past. Okay, so uh, we finished the review here. Um, here's my work on the slope formula. So I did 4 minus 1 and then 3 minus negative 2 to get 3 over 5. Because on the other way around, you'd have got negative 3 over negative 5, but then they both stay positive. Uh, distance, I did 4 minus negative 1 and I got um, 5 squared and I did 0 minus 2. I got negative 2 squared. Remember, uh, any number squared is going to be positive, so I got square root 29. When I did that in the calculator, it stayed the same, but the decimal was 5.38. Now, for the midpoint, I actually didn't use the formula as much as I created my line. And I said that if A is at 2, 3, and the midpoint is at negative 1, 7, how do I find the next point? And so I did a pattern. From 2 to negative 1 is minus 3. So I knew I had to do minus 3 more. That's negative 4. 3 to 7 is positive 4. So positive 4 more is 11. So my coordinates of B are at negative 4, 11. And then finally, just about slope. Remember, any line parallel has the same slope. Any line perpendicular has the opposite flip slope. All right. So now let's get into transformations. A transformation uh, flips an initial figure called a pre-image. onto a final figure called an image. And maybe flips wasn't the right word because a transformation is more than just a flip. So we're going to move that out and we're going to say moves. Okay. There are four types of transformations that you've already studied before. And they are, you could have a reflection. And that's the one that we use the most. That's why I said the word flip. Okay. And so basically, you know, reflection can be like this, okay? We have a rotation, which is a turn. And so that, we have a translation which is a slide or a glide, depending on which way you might see it. And so essentially you just take the shape, same shape and you move it somewhere else in the um, picture and you can go up or down. And then finally we have a dilation, which is where the uh, shape changes in size. So you have a really little triangle that goes to a really big one, or you could have a really big one that switches to a small one. Okay, so the ones that we see the most in geometry are these first three, and probably it's this, and then we see this, and then we see that. So let's talk about the different types of reflections and translations that we're going to see.
for this lesson, I prefer to have two different colors. Um, you know, certainly you guys can can do whatever you want, but I'm gonna pull out a pen and a highlighter. So <clears throat> the first one is reflection in the x-axis. Okay, so we write our coordinates as x, y. So when we do a reflection in the x-axis, our x coordinate actually stays the same. It's our y coordinate that changes. And really all we have to do is change the sign. So if I have triangle DEF with D at negative 2, negative 1, E at negative 1, 3, and F at 3, negative 1, So I have DEF. If I want to flip that across the x-axis, I have to write a D prime, an E prime, and an F prime. And so when I do this, I want to keep the x the same. And I'm going to change the sign of the y. So if this is negative 1, the y should be 1. If E was negative 1, 3, then the E prime is negative 1, negative 3. And the F prime is going to be 3, positive 1. So let's watch and see how that changes over the Y, over the X axis. And you should be able to tell that this line right here is the line which it flipped over. So before, the top of the shape was above the x-axis, and now it's below. All right, go ahead and try this one. And again, I'm looking for, do you have the correct points written down? And once you have those points written down, do you have the two shapes? Okay, so there's your check. Uh, KLMN was a square and then I flipped it over the x-axis and basically I only had to change the signs of the y values. Now notice the zero didn't change because zero is not positive or negative. Alright. Reflection in the y-axis. So you have trapezoid DEFG with vertices at zero, negative three, one, three, 3, 3, and 4, negative 3. And I want to flip it over the y-axis. Well, with the x's, we change the sign of the y in order to make it go over the x-axis. So what do you think we're going to have to do for the y-axis? We're going to have to change the sign of the x. So for d prime, well, that's 0, so I'm not going to change that. e prime, however, is going to become negative 1, 3, because I'm flipping over the y, I change the sign of the x. f prime, negative 3, 3, and g prime, negative 4, <clears throat> negative 3. So now I go ahead and go put the, put the points in. That one stayed the same. Negative 1, 3. Negative 3, 3. And negative 4, negative 3. And I have successfully flipped the line, or flipped the shape over the y axis. So go ahead and do A, B, C, D, and check your answer when you're done. Okay, so the big thing is you should be checking your uh, four primes. So I have A prime at negative one, four, B prime at negative three, two, C prime at negative two, negative two, and D prime at three, one. Okay, so we've done it over the x-axis where we changed the y's. We've done it over the y-axis where we changed the x's. Now we're gonna do it over the origin. So when we do it over the origin, the origin is zero, zero. So when we're flipping it over the origin, we're actually flipping it over both. And so we have to change both signs. 
So if I have my original quadrilateral, negative 3, 3, and then 1, 4, 4, 0, and negative 3, negative 3, If I want to flip this over the origin, I need to flip it down and left and right. So I have to change both signs. And so my A prime is going to be 3, negative 3. My B prime is going to be negative 1, negative 4. C prime uh, is going to be negative 4, 0. And my D prime is going to end up being 3, 3. So, 3, negative 3. You can tell I've moved that point from there to there, which is right over that spot, which is perfect. B prime, negative 1, negative 4. C prime, negative 4, 0 and d prime 3 3 and so I flip my shape over the origin go ahead and try triangle ABC and check your answer so there's the uh, correct answer for triangle ABC and ABC prime uh, you can tell it has flipped over this spot right here. All right, the fourth way to reflect something is over any line. Uh, so, you know, for example, line y equals x. And so what is the line y equals x? Well, the line y equals x is the one with the slope of 1. So it runs through this spot right here. So if we're saying that y is equal to x, then we can substitute y for x and vice versa in any equation. So when we write the ordered pairs here, we're writing y first and x last. So we're not flipping the signs, we're just flipping the numbers. So for the x-axis, we change the y's. y-axis, we change the x's. Origin, we change both. Both, And so for y equals x, we just flip them. So if we have triangle FGH with vertices of F, negative 3, negative 1, G, 0, 4, H, 3, negative 1. And we want to flip it across this line. Well, this one has to move over here somewhere. So we're just going to flip the X and the Y. Okay? And actually, I'm wrong. This one's going to have to flip down here. Okay? So, uh, F prime it's going to flip over here. I was right the first time. F prime is going to be negative 1, negative 3. G prime is going to be 4, 0. H prime is going to be negative 1, 3. So, negative 1, negative 3. And we see we move from here to here. G prime is 4, 0. We move from there to there. And then H prime is negative 1, 3. So we move that point to there. And we create our triangle. And as you can see, the triangle has now flipped over this line. So go ahead and try this parallelogram here in the line y equals x. All right, so there you go. Your work today is to work on the reflections. Now, I've given you um, a couple things here. You can see uh, we have y equals x, x-axis, y equals negative x. Actually, we're going to change that to, so i got to change a couple of these things here. Um, we got y equals x, we got x-axis, we got y-axis. Uh, I'm going to change this one right here to the origin. Okay. Um, and then I want you to try these. I want you to kind of see if you can do some uh, 
some some ideas about how to get this. I'll give you a clue. Across the line, y equals 1, if you draw it, you should be able to use the midpoint idea to help us. And I'll, I'll do this first one, and you can do the other one on the back, and the x equals. So if I'm going across this line, this gets to stay where it is. This has to move. And so then I'm just going to recreate the shape the same way. And so you can see I flipped that across the line y equals 1 by doing that. I just counted from the line. So you can do the same thing for 4. And then on the back, we're going to make the same uh, adjustments. This one's going to be the origin. And then um, I want to see how you do with these uh, y equals negative 1 and x equals 1 problems. So just give me a... Just do your best on those and we'll go over them together. Where I really want to spend some time though is I want to talk about rotations. 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. So if I have this shape here and I want to move it around the origin, okay? So basically to turn it 90 degrees. In order to turn this shape 90 degrees, which qua quadrant is it going to end up in? Well, if it's clockwise, I'm going this way. So it is going to end up in the bottom quadrant, and it's going to look like this. Okay? And so when we look at that, we know it's going to be over 3 and down 2 for the first point. So over 3 and down 2, and then over 5 and down 2, and then again over 2 and down 4 so that is a 90 degree clockwise rotation about the origin 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin I have to turn the shape like this and so it's going to end up looking like that alright and so we know that it's going to be up to over one four over one uh, up over f up five over four and then up one over four so again it's just practice on actually turning the shapes and, and understanding what they look like when I turn them around the origin. Okay, So that's clockwise and counterclockwise. So I want you guys to take a look at those for about, you know, do these 12 problems. And then the other thing I want to talk about is translations. And these are pretty simple. It's just moving shapes. So if I tell you to take this shape and move it four left and four down, I'm going to take this point and I'm going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then I take the next point. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Take the final point. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I've moved the shape. And that's it. Those are the three big things that you have to do. You know, you have to be able to reflect. You have to be able to turn, and you have to be able to slide. And so all of these will give you some good practice on that. So go ahead and complete this uh, sheet here for day one. Check it off with me. Let's talk about the big ideas. And then you guys can go ahead and move on to day two.